What's up, tribe? How you guys doing? Go ahead and hit that subscribe button, and I'll be like this video. This is going to be Ready to Love, Season 6, Episode 11. It is the final men's lounge. We're down to the final four. We have Paul, Clifton, uh, Donovan, and uh, Demetrius, right? And they're meeting with Tommy, and Tommy says, listen, we're down to the dirty, dirty. It's time to, you know, take that next step, and you guys are going to be introducing your matches with your, um, introducing them to your family members. You know, that's an important step. That's the next step. That's where we are in this process. And honestly, most of the guys did not seem to be too excited about this. Um, which says to me a couple of things. Uh, everybody, I don't know. It says to me a couple of things. I mean, the first thing it says to me is that I don't feel like y'all were all that secure in these matches that you felt like it was time to meet the parents. Um, it also tells me that you take meeting the parents probably a little, or, or family, because I don't think anybody met a parent except for Donovan. Yeah, nobody met a parent. It was all, like, other family. I mean, that could be a variety of reasons, so I'm not going to psychoanalyze that. We find out that Cena is out of the process. She stood Tommy up and, you know, basically Tommy said, listen, you're not ready to love. If you can't even meet with me and have a conversation about what's going on and have that much respect for me as, really, as your boss, you know, technically, um, then, yeah, there's no, there's no need for you to be in this process. And so she has been eliminated, which... No great loss there at this point. She really wasn't interacting with anybody. And the only person she felt like she had a connection with was Donovan. And Donovan has moved on from, from that. So, I wish you well, baby. Whatever you got going on, I, you know, wish you well. So then, um, Demetrius feels like he needs to have a conversation with, no, Donovan feels like he needs to have a conversation with Sabrina. After what, the way things sort of went down at the brunch last week, he feels like they kind of need to clear the air. First of all, both of them showed up with an attitude. So, you know, I I am 99% sure that this conversation took place because production wanted it to take place. Because that's a conversation that could have happened, you know, over the phone, honestly. It really won't that deep, as far as I was concerned. Um, I'm just going to be honest and say... Sabrina in this throughout most of this process has probably really irritated me because I do not feel like she has clearly articulated what it is that she needs and what it is that she she's looking for. And it's okay to be in that space and say, listen, I'm not quite sure what I need or what I'm looking for. But then you don't need to be in a process like this because I felt like no matter what people did, you were looking for more. You asked Demetrius, you like last week at the beach or the week before at the, the little cabin, you said you wanted more affection. You wanted more deliberate you are my woman, I am making you, you know, I'm making it known that you are my choice. And then when he did it, and someone brought up the, the, the you know, when Joy brought up the, okay, you know, give him a little something, something, I'm not ready for that yet. I don't think we're at that place yet. But you wanted it from him. And he gave it to you. So, yeah, so... Donovan was like, you know, I felt some kind of way when you were saying that I wasn't ready to love because I am ready to love. And I feel like I've showed you that I'm ready to love. And, you know, not quite sure where you're getting that from. I don't feel like I did or said anything to make you feel like I was insincere in any of this process or anything that I was doing throughout this process. So, yeah, I felt some kind of way about it. And Sabrina, you know, in her mind, he's just sensitive and he's just upset because I'm calling him out on his stuff. And no, girl. Don't nobody understand that you talking about. Same thing later on, she had a conversation with Demetrius, and it was the same thing. She's telling Demetrius, well, I just think that, you know, you're just still not showing me what I need, and I still am not feeling like, you know, um, you're intentional in, in your actions towards me. And Demetrius is like, girl, I don't know what else you want from me. I'm telling you that, that you are mine and I am yours. So then she starts, so once they get past that, then she starts bringing up other stuff, you know, the submissive thing. And he was like, I, I really thought we resolved this. Like, I do not expect my woman to be barefoot pregnant and do what I tell her to do. Like, that is not my intention. You know, I, I thought we cleared up the submissive thing and the, the word submissive. So then she says, well, you want me to, you, you would want me to take your last name if we get married. 
First of all, y'all ain't even agreed if y'all dating that. So why are you even talking about what he will or will not want you to do if y'all get to that space? Y'all got time. Y'all got a lot of time. But okay, we're going to have the conversation. Let's have the conversation. Why is that unreasonable? Why is that something that's weird, different, or out of place? Most people... Most people, and I know there are people who don't do it, and some people do it for professional reasons. Some people do it for because they just don't want to do it. But most people do the traditional take the man's last name. If you don't want to do it, then that's a conversation to be had. I get that. But I just felt like you kept looking for something to be wrong, and you kept going down the list until you got to a point where y'all were at an impasse, and Demetrius was like, well, I'm not, I'm not bending on that. Like, how do we become one if we're still separate? And she was like, well, in my last marriage, I didn't take his last name. Girl, you divorced. I don't think you should be using... I, I sound like Marceau now from Love and Marriage Huntsville. I don't think you should be using an example of a failure. Like, you're, you're divorced. And I'm not saying that's why you're divorced, but you're divorced. So why are you using that example as to anything you want to do in the future, ma'am? So, yeah. So then Demetrius says, well, you know, is it, you know, I think, um, you know, I would like for you to meet you know, my family, you know, we're moving in this space now. We, we've cleared some things up and I feel like it's time for, you know, I want to, first of all, Sabrina, you know the game, you know the show, you know it's time to do that. Like, that's the part of the show that we're in. She's going to say, well, I don't think we're at that space yet. Like, that's really, I, mean, I just don't think we're ready yet. Girl. Girl. Girl, it's a it's part of the show, girl. It's uh, anyway. Moving on to some happy couples. So we see Joy and Clifton meet up. Um and Joy meets Clifton's aunt and I mean uncle and cousin. And listen, there's a thin line. When you're meeting family, right? There's a thin line you have to walk between Showing your authentic self, but not seeming like you're being a kiss up or you're saying what people want to hear, right? And I feel like Joy did a good job of saying, listen, this is who I am. Um, you know, I'm, I really care about Clifton. He, we, we complete each other's sentences. We know what each other's thinking. You know, we, we have the hard conversations. You know, I smile when I hear his voice. Like, she's saying all the right things, but it's real. It's not an act that's not rehearsed, it's not for the purposes of you. It is really, truly where they are in this process. And I think his family felt the sincerity in that. And I think his family understood that. Um, the only hesitation is that Joy, you know, Joy's um, career. Joy spends six months out of the year in Mexico. I guess she has like a standing gig in Mexico. Which basically turns her relationship into a long-distance relationship for half of the year. And Mexico is not a quick, you know, weekend, let me get in my car and go see my, my boo because I'm missing her kind of thing. Like, it's an intentional decision that you're going to make that you're going to drive to Mexico. Um, and that's the hesitation. And you can see that Clifton and Joy were both very emotional about that because she said, Pretty much as soon as the process is over, the show is over filming, she has to leave. And so it's it's going to be hard. But I think both of them are legit choosing each other. And they're cho they, you know, walking into it knowing the, um, knowing the, the challenges and willing and ready to move forward in the, in the challenge. So there's that. Um... Paul went on a date with Dakia. Listen, listen, both of them are just swimming to the life raft and trying not to drown. Do I think they like each other? Sure. Do I think it's a love match? Probably not. Um, it's sort of like they both looked up and was like, oh shit, you, you want to, you, me and you, you know how like, you know, like when you in like a, a yoga class and they say find a partner and you can kind of look up and realize it's just you and one other person left and it's like, you want to, okay, uh, me and you. That's what I feel like the Kia and Paul are doing. It's like the Kia was focused in one direction, Paul was focused in another direction, and they both find themselves still in this process. And it's like, all right, well, let's go ahead. And Tommy sees it because when they got back to the men's lounge at the end of the episode, Tommy 
was questioning Paul. Why did it take so long? Why now? Why her? What are your intentions? Is this real? And Tommy is giving him the side eye. Like, stop playing. Play, you know, like, play or no player. Do I think it's with any malice? No, I don't think it's with any malice. I think it's just, we the last people standing. Let's see what we can make happen. Um, but, um, oh, excuse me. But I don't think it's any great love match there. And again, I don't think it's with any malice. So, there's that. Then we have Donovan with Carmen and his mom. You could definitely tell that Donovan was worried. His mom, he said, my mom is definitely, you know, a character. And I think he was really, really worried about his mom maybe saying something or coming off, you know, I don't want to use, I don't want to, because his mom seems like she's really funny and really sweet. But I definitely could see where his mom is a character, right? She got ready to start telling stories about when he was a kid and she was going to call people talking about some Donovan was spoiled and he was like, yeah, I don't know about that. I could call so-and-so. I could call so-and-so. So, like, you could definitely see that is this whole thing with them. And Carmen shows up. Carmen bought flowers for her. She bought flowers for him. And, you know, um, she asked Carmen about... Um, like overindulgence and and Kate, not, not like basically monetary stuff. Um, and Carmen said, "Listen, I'm gonna cut through. Basically, I'm paraphrasing. Listen, I got it now, but I didn't always have it. Like I came from a single parent, and we struggled, and I had hand me downs, and getting something new was a treat. And so my son, who definitely has a different upbringing than what I had, I try to instill in him those values that you know, this is to be earned and not given." You know, you are you are privileged. This is not how everybody lives. Um, what else they talk about? That's pretty much it, child. Um, but Mama liked Carmen. They were, you know, joking and everything. And she definitely got the thumbs up. Uh, Mama definitely... The Mama definitely gave the thumbs up to Carmen. And um, I saw a different Carmen. Right? Y'all know, y'all know me. I'm going to call it spade a spade. And there have been times when I've been hard on Carmen. But in this episode, in his, in her interaction with his mom, I was, I was really here for I feel like we got the, I'm not trying to be a mean girl, Carmen. And I hate to say that because I think mean girl is over, that's just an overused word. I don't think Carmen is necessarily being a mean girl. I think there were certain people Carmen did not rock with. Um, but it was good to see this. It was good to see a mellow side of Carmen. And there was a part where Donovan got emotional and he got a little teary eyed when his mom was talking about, um, how they grew up and how his dad wasn't around. And she said, you know, he ain't seen his dad, but I told him, you know, that's his dad's laws. You know, you're, you're special. You're the prize and your dad lost out. And so it was, it was, it was sweet. You could definitely tell that they, have a close relationship and he even said later on that his mom is like his best friend you know that's his main girl kind of thing and he said my mom doesn't think anybody's good enough for me and the fact that she like Carmen you know lets me know okay cool he said but ultimately the last you know the final decision is mine so the Kia meets Paul and his brother now Paul's brother who first of all Paul your brother is fine okay hey boo uh, but second of all Paul's brother was, like, interviewing her, asking all kinds of questions, very specific, very, you know, pointed questions about intentions and, and, and all kinds of stuff. I, and, I mean, the kid was answering him. She was boom, 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 boom. But, again, the brother said it feels like they're rehearsed, which I won't say rehearsed, but I'll just say prepared, right? Because there were some of the same questions that they're asked, you know, why are you in this process? You know, you're you're a boss at work. How do you turn that off? You know, that kind of thing. And again, she said all the right things. And the brother said that, you know, she seems nice and cool. And he said, you know, my brother tends to stay in relationships too long. He tends to stay in such a bad situations longer than he should. And so, you know, that's something that I'm always concerned about. That's something I'm going to always be looking out for because it's my brother, right? Um... But again, brother, you ain't got nothing to worry about. That ain't no love match, child. They might be friends. They might hang out and have some drinks from time to time. But, child, you ain't got to worry about nothing there. So we get to the men's lounge at the end. And um, basically, you know, they recap what happened. 
But when it came to the Demetrius Sabrina situation, the fact that Sabrina declined to meet Demetrius's family was a concern for Tommy. And he said, well, Demetrius, look, I'm going to let you go and talk to her and you make the decision. Um, there was no elimination in the men's lounge, but we did see Demetrius go and have a conversation with, um, um, Sabrina, and ultimately Sabrina was like, listen, I just don't think you're the one for me. Like, I, you're a nice guy, and that's sweet, but I just don't think the person that I'm looking for is in this process. So, you know, I'm, I'm bowing out, and Demetrius was like, well, hell... He was shocked. I mean, you can see it on his face. Like, damn, like, I thought we were, I thought we were good. I thought we said we were going to reset. I thought we said we were going to try to build something and, and get back to the basics. And you're saying, nah, I don't think it's you. He said, okay, cool. Well, you know, if you leave, I leave because you were the only connection I had. So, you don't need me staying around. So, at the end of the episode, we had two eliminations, Sabrina and Demetrius. So, it looks like next week. They're flipping it. Um, the guys thought that was the last thing, but now it looks like the guys are going to have to meet the ladies' family. So we're going to have Clifton and Joy, Paul and Dakia, and um, Donovan and Carmen. So we'll see how that works out. Y'all let me know what y'all think. Talk to y'all later. Peace.